And right now it's time for that time when we talk to our special guest. Tonight's special guest is Bob Harvey. Bob Harvey is chairman of Waterfront Auckland and the author of the new book, Untamed Coast. Bob invites Auckland and the rest of the country when visiting Auckland to come to the waterfront for all the planned summer entertainment and be watching for the chance to win the new book. We welcome Bob Harvey as our special guest on The Beat Goes On. Bob Harvey, welcome. Nice to be back. Welcome to The Beat Goes On. You're always a welcome visitor. Thank you, mate. You're a very creative person, Bob. Look at this, a wonderful, wonderful book all about the untamed coast, which is... The West course, Coast. The West Coast. The West Coast over the Waitakere Ranges. There's a new coast to discover. Now that's and the Hillary Trail, of course, and that's what this book is about. But we're going to talk a little bit about the waterfront. So you were the chairman of the of Auckland... Waterfront Auckland. Of Waterfront Auckland. I mean, you've got some, some great plans for down there, haven't you? Well, the, the plans are unrolling as they go. We're trying to get the tram over to Britomart. Yep. And we've got a bit of a problem with the bridge, which you have to build a new bridge. But right now we've got the advent yeah. calendar, which is on our big gantry. Yeah. Now, dazzling work, you know, artwork from Dick Frizzell, Billy Apple, uh, just amazing kind of, and we open a door a day. So, and they're big doors, three metres by Oh, four okay. Metres. So they're seriously big openings. Mm. And uh, we've just finished a brilliant work um, on, the wa- on the tanks. Uh, Hamish, Keith and I decided to find a terrific group of artists mm. to put scaffolding up. People said, why don't I do it, including the guys that own the tanks. I thought they might say, no matches, please. They're empty, by the way. Most of them are empty. Uh, we're doing artwork. And the first is up with a magnificent poem by C.K. Stead mm. and glorious work. So that you can see it across from almost the Harbour Bridge. So summer on the waterfront has never been better. And the Voyager Museum which is a little tucked away, I have to say, but what a good museum it is. That's just up the other end. Boulevards, if you like, from all the way from Silo Park, where you can see the old classic vintage boats, which we've got just down there now. Look at the old Kestrel, which is probably the most amazing bit of transport in in New Zealand. And then the restaurants, and then over to Wero Bridge, to the Voyager Museum. So what you're saying is it's just buzzing and you, it's alive and well. You've got the best job in, in New Zealand. I, well, you? John Key's got the best job, <laughs> followed by <laughs> Len Brown, and then there's me. <laughs> well, that's one side of the coast, Bob. That's the beautiful Auckland waterfront. But what about the other side, the side that you love and is your lifetime, and it's called the Untamed Coast. The Untamed Coast. This is the third edition of this book. Uh, I put it together about uh, 14 years ago. And this is the most serious update, all the new tracks. And, of course, how to walk the Hillary Trail, which is no walk in the park. The Hillary Trail is a serious but marvellous walk. And it's safe, but it's got parts that are difficult. In other words, be prepared to come for a serious walk. Mm. I think you should How long would it take? Yeah. Four days. Four days. And this book will tell you where to stop, where to stay, and how to keep walking. Do All it. our viewers Do should yeah. decide, I'm going to walk <laughs> the Hillary Trail, this, the Hillary this, Trail. This, this summer. And the Untamed Coast. Now, we'll tell us about your enthusiasm first, Bob. <laughs> where were you? You were born in Auckland, were you? I'm a gully boy. Oh, okay. I'm just up in Newton Gully. Okay, you're born in Newton uh, Gully. Now, why did this love of the uh, I biked out. I biked out on an old rally bike to Kerry Kerry. How long ago? Uh, uh, well, I'm 72, so I went out there when I was 15. So, right. so you biked out all the way out without to, gears. Yeah, I don't know how I did that. And I went out with a mate, and under the trees the, at Kerry Kerry, the surf club were having a party. They were having a 21st birthday. They saw me under the trees and said, "Hey, kid." can you swim? And I said, yes. They said, would you like to join the surf club? I said, yes. And I've been there ever since. So I'm on patrol on the 1st of January. So I'm down there with my son and his son, who's only seven, uh, on the uh, day of the new year, I'm on patrol again. And I've been on patrol on that beach between the flags for, I don't know what's coming up, 60 years. Gosh. That's what a man does. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and I'm not too bad. I mean, I do a lot of sitting up on the tower, pointing and waving and mm. telling people what to do. But uh, Could you plunge into the water and swim 200 metres and save oh, somebody, Bob? Easily. Easily. Well, good idea. Easy. Of course. I don't think I could get down off the tower. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to do it. So I, I'm, a, I'm a gym rat. I go to the gym 
yeah. most days. Now, this is an area that you loved, but it started to be threatened oh. by development in a way, and you mm. fought a long battle, and finally they passed by one vote the Waitakere Rangers and Heritage Bill. What did that mean to you when they passed? It meant the thing that I really stood as mayoralty for. I, I think I should be honest about that. I mean, I did love the job, and I wasn't too bad at it, but the thing, the real and one thing I wanted to achieve was to protect the Rangers in perpetuity, and it needed a parliamentary bill. Mm. And so that one vote... One vote? One yeah. vote. Who was it? But does anybody know who it was? I, of course I know. It was uh, Philip Taito Field. Really? Um, who was just on the cusp of being out, if you like. He saw the worth of this and came, and that was the vote that swung it. It took 40 I mean, years. 40, 40 years. years. Jonathan Hunt had a go, and it failed, and I had a go over 14 years as mayor, mainly as the vineyards fell over, the orchards stopped being orchards. Developers wanted to cut up not two or three houses, 80, 100. Death by a thousand cuts, they called it. Death by a thousand cuts. Now this range, these wonderful ranges, are ours and our kids and our grandkids forever. And so this book is dedicated to those trails and tracks and the people. Somebody told me that you actually have built a home in Kerry Kerry. Is that correct? Yeah. I, um, I've never built a house in my life. And uh, What about resource years. consent? Was that hard to get, Bob? You've got no <laughs> idea how difficult it was because all my own rules, which I had made, the Eco City rules, came to bite me in the bum. Oh, wonderful. And uh, I did everything. I was Exhibit A because I, I didn't go near the council, even though I was mayor. I just said, here, here, lodge the application. Yeah. Uh, it cost me around a hundred grand for resource consent. Uh huh. Oh, and, but yeah, because uh, the council wanted it back a bit from the bank, yeah. the roof. Lo- I, I'm upfront with that. Yeah. I don't know how people get a consent today to build a modest, and it is a modest house, uh, in any coastal or er- area. And and I learnt to my cost what the rules that I'd brought in. Yeah to make things right, you know, all that uh, really cost. And so I, I now know why I used to try and help people yeah. to get a consent when they'd say, we've been waiting two years. I just waited a year. Could it be better? Well, it's Could you change to, it with the magic wand? Well, the government have tried and said, if all the, everything lines up, you'll get your consent in 20 days or 21 days. Well, I had everything lined up. I did Māori, of course, because I was part of that environment. I did sustainability. I did everything. Uh, well, it took me seven months, and, of course, the building costs went up. Um, I'm, am I complaining? No, I'm just mentioning in passing. But it that's it's an ironic cheap. little twist about Yeah, life, I built on a ridge yeah. and I didn't want people to build on ridges, so I cut the house down into the, th- into the ridge. I lowered the roof, I pulled it back. Everything was back to the architect, you know, and everything was on the bill. And at the end of it, I, I wrote some pretty bloody, you know, I, I thought, well, that's it, off to the rest home I go. Yeah. <laughs> now, Bob, when you come out in the morning in your new home and carry carry, and, <laughs> and this, you can smell the sea air, and there's a lovely oh, breeze, sure. and you've got your coffee in your hand, and you stand there and you look out to sea, uh, what do you feel? I feel terrific about being able to keep it, being a guardian of the place. And, and to be honest, I'm passing through. You know, that's what we all do. You've got to love the land that you nurture, and you've got to make sure that people respect it. And uh, yeah, some some of the rules are tough. You don't cut down trees out west. You you live amongst the landscape. So when I look at Kari Kari Beach, it's much the same uh, in shape and size as it's been for a thousand to three thousand years. But the beach has changed. The dunes have risen, and, you know, all that kind of thing. But I'm seeing a changing landscape. But. It's a landscape that many people have protected, and I'm just one of those protectors. We're going to give three of our viewers throughout New Zealand an opportunity a great to idea. win one of these books. Signed. Signed, yes. <laughs> Here, you can see there that Bob has signed the copies. They'll be worth $50,000 in 100 years' time. Who knows? <laughs> now, Bob, we need a question. So, uh, uh, who was the photographer? I think that, who was the photographer on this book? That's a great question. Yeah. And we'll give our viewers a clue. They may have missed it. Ted Scott. 
And if you could email Jared at thebeatgoeson.co.nz and uh, get it in as quick as possible, you, you could have this book for Christmas. But it's a great read. And speaking of Christmas, uh, Bob, have a Merry Christmas. Thank you, mate. And uh, what's the warnings about Christmas? Don't eat and drink too much. And, and just... swim between the flags. And swim between the flags. <laughs> and don't get the sunscreen. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. <laughs>